Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Well, I'm just making our weekly uh, feeding. Uh, he is very eager to feed, but he's also uh, forgets what he's doing and I have to keep tabs on him to make sure he follows through and actually swallows <laughs> it. He'll, he'll release it and just leave it there, uh, although he's really difficult to feed. Now, I've had many offers for people who want this white speckled rattlesnake because they have a female with no mate, but I put so much time and effort in keeping him alive that and he's such a quirky little guy that if I I fear that people will kill him accidentally because uh, he is such a quirky little guy I can't overfeed him uh, and when he does eat like this you sort of have to watch over him to make sure he actually swallows it it looks like he's He's doing what he needs to do, um, but that's no guarantee that he actually finishes the job. <laughs> he definitely has ADD. Beautiful little rattlesnake from the southwestern United States. Um, he's over three years old now and still quite small. Uh, the females were huge by the time that I, uh, I sent them to uh, various homes and such. Um, their venom is not well counteracted by Crofab, um, which leads me to believe that uh, if bitten by one of these guys, my Anti-venom of choice would be Anavip, which is FDA approved for rattlesnake bites in the U.S. It's not currently approved for uh, moccasin bites like cottonmouths and copperheads. Um, but there's, you know, there's no data that it doesn't work for those. It's just not FDA approved for those. And recently there was, see, recently he's like, you're talking too much, dude. I'm not going to eat while you're talking. <laughs> um, recently on my National Snake Bite support page, uh, there was a moccasin bite. Uh, I forget whether a copperhead or it actually may have been a cottonmouth. Um, they started off with Anavip, even though it really wasn't uh, FDA approved. I'm not sure why they did that, but I think in the end they had to switch to Crofab. So uh, until there's science to back up the fact that. Uh, Anavip is okay to use for moccasins, uh, uh, you know, uh, since I don't have any of those anyway, it doesn't matter to me, but for those of you out there that keep copperheads or water moccasins, uh, your anti-venom of choice right now is Crofab, uh, and if you're bitten by a rattlesnake, well, uh, my first choice for rattlesnake bite would be uh, Anavit. Um, so he's finally got it uh, sort of figured out. I think he sort of gives up. It's like, oh, it's not really going down so well, so I'm just going to spit it out. Uh, so what I will do is I'll try to get a second one down his gullet since he's sort of all right, I don't mean to offend you. Go ahead, keep going. 
and just work it into the uh, train drive here and hopefully it gets caught by his mandibles and you're making it difficult dude hopefully it goes he's upset now he's by her he's like mm. Well, this is an awful long mouse you gave me. Okay. It's caught in the uh, in the drivetrain there and is uh, will probably go down. I don't normally feed him too, but um, uh, since we're talking and we're here, I'll give him a second one. We'll see if he keeps it down and doesn't regurge. You notice he has a very nice string of rattles all the way from the button when he was born for three years there's not many segments there for that rattle that's because you know he's been a runt very sickly regurg all the time not interested in eating I force fed him for the first year um, so he doesn't really show a lot of uh, growth by by shedding Oh no, there's more light. They can see me better. Hey, yeah, dude, you got it. And believe me, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, to force feeding snakes, it's, it's not easy. It's dangerous for me. It's dangerous for the snake. Uh, I know this as a fact because I've accidentally killed snakes while force feeding. Uh, it's, I don't even like thinking about it because the uh, the whole thing comes rushing back in my brain and it's very unpleasant. So, you know, force feeding is sort of the last uh, ditch effort. Fortunately, you know, we've got cannula feeding down pretty well, so we don't have to try to stuff larger prey down their gullets, um, and we can do do them justice and get them going uh, with just uh, just feeding them uh, Gerber's baby chicken baby food with gravy uh, a couple times a week small amounts and we saw this success with the Echis oscillatus um, now they're at a size where they're taking whole pinks all by themselves uh, no fuss no muss so uh, there are options in your husbandry uh, available, you know, other than stuffing whole pinks and such down their gullets. So he looks like he pretty much has it licked. I think he's going to be moving to a, a bigger quarter where he can be seen. Uh, the problem is if I move him he's going to get butt hurt and not want to eat for a while. So I want to sort of get him chunked up a little bit if I can. Uh, I think I'm going to be moving some of the Echis into the bins because for the most part uh, they don't want to be seen anyway. The Echis leucogasters uh, and maybe the other the adult pair of Echis oscillatus will go to some bins here. Um, and I'll put some animals in the display cages uh, that really uh, are okay to be seen. So he's got this licked, so to speak, so I'm going to gently, carefully close this. Did you poop in your water dish? No, it's just shake a big substance. So I'm going to give him a, a little water to drink, although very commonly we see him curled up in his bowl. <laughs> He's so adorable, uh, uh, but that's not what the bowl is in there for. <laughs> so Elvis is poking his head out and Mr. Boomslang has noticed that. Mr. Boomslang uh, really freaks out when he sees a large snake out in the room because he comes from Africa where 
cobras quite commonly eat other snakes and uh, he can uh, he knows that so Elvis this is Elvis's normal routine he will go uh, from that side of the room under there explore back there maybe head for the other side of the room uh, this is all normal for Elvis. So right now, I'm going to uh, clean up his mess. Hello, Elvis. Come on. You're okay, dude. You're okay. You know, he's really not extremely dangerous unless you're trying to feed him. And then he gets very, very excited and becomes sight-driven where he is going to um, bite anything that moves and hopes that it's the actual food item that he's after. This is, that's when it really gets dangerous. Alright, he's all held up and back there. Probably not going to like the fact that I'm going to put his uh, his hut back to its normal place. He's on the move again. Uh, yes, he seems to be going back in the other direction. He may try to come around the room in the opposite direction since I'm here and right now he knows that I was sort of after him, but. I wanted to shut him out and I wanted to have him contained and he was having no part of it because I just didn't have <laughs> two boom slang. Oh, is he uh, uh, No, he's just laser focused in on him, just watching the movement. The big old hoods. again.
tail's now gone completely, so he's, I guess, under, under there somewhere. It's amazing how such a big snake can disappear like that. Yeah, he's all, I see part of him back there. He's yeah. coiled up under there. Yep. That's exactly it. Interesting trying to tune him. When he didn't really want to be tuned. Are we gonna try to put him back now or just let him hang out for a while? Um well, I want to clean his water dish before I uh, put him back in there. So I'll go do that. You can keep your eye on him. So I'm going to retreat to my corner near the door. If he comes out, I'm out of here. And shortly after Al left, I saw a head poke out. Yeah, he's like, okay, the big guy has left, so now's my chance. To make a break for it. Hi, dude, I see you. I see you. I think I'm going to let him roam a bit. He has not been out for quite some time, so I will sit here and Elvis sit uh, for a while and let him move about as long as he's not destroying anything and he's, uh, I'll let him go for 15, 20 minutes, half hour or so. Alright, well this is where he ended up, his favorite spot. We're going to let him sit here and get a little sunlight before Al tries to corral him back into the cage. Well, the easiest way, although it's maybe not the safest way, um, is to lure him back to his cage with the rat. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> but that's, that's a way to get him easily out from where he is, across the room, heading in a direction as long as he's not locking on to me as the food source. So, don't step back. I'm going to crack this door and take a picture of this. Oh! Are you, you're hungry now, huh? You're hungry. Well, you know, when these guys sort of strike at you, It's not because you're upsetting them, it's they're just letting you know that they're interested in food. So I'll have to bring her up something. She, she's not, you know, an everyday eater uh, or every week eater. Um, so I will, uh, I will feed her as soon as Elvis uh, goes back to his cage. Because I don't want the smell of rodent in the room. Oh yeah, bad or idea. on me. Uh, hopefully she doesn't get butt hurt and go back 
and say, no, you missed your 12-second opportunity. <laughs>